The subject that we shall endeavor to use this morning with God's help and with your prayers. The memories linger on. The memories linger on. As it is our custom, we invite each of you to look at your neighbor and let's say it together. Come on. The memories linger on. Come on now. Somebody gonna get it right here. Come on. Come on. One more time. Come on. The memories linger on. In other words, I can't get rid of them. I can't shake them. I can't forget about it. Why? Because the memories linger on. Every now and then it's good to walk down memory lane. In the text, Apostle Paul found himself in a valley of memories. Mm -hmm. He remembered what the Lord Jesus Christ did for him. He remembered what Christ meant to him and all of those that he met. But most of all, Paul remembered the true meaning of the Lord's Supper. He remembered the Eucharist. He remembered what Holy Communion really meant. He remembered that the bread that we eat is just a symbol of the body of Christ that was broken on Calvary's cross. He remembered that the cup over which we drink is just a symbol of the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross for my sins, for your sins, and for the sins of the whole world. He remembered that it was just the covenant of God. He remembered the prayer which was a blessing over that which we ate. Mm -hmm. And that blessing purifies mm -hmm. and it multiplies mm -hmm. that which we ate. Mm -hmm. Yes, Paul was in the valley of, of, of memory. He remembered that the Lord's Supper uh, was a memorial service, a time to keep memories alive, the time to commemorate and to celebrate those who have touched us and moved us in a mighty way. Amen. You remember that the Lord's Supper was a time of self-examination for each of us to look deeply inside of ourselves a time of forgiveness so that when we come to the table we have no animosity toward one another. Amen. We hold no grudges toward another. Amen. That we are clean, that we have forgiven our brothers and sisters and so when we come to eat of the bread and drink from the cup we come with clean hands. Amen. Paul remembered that the Lord's Supper was a time of forgiveness and reconciliation. Time to bury the hatchet. Time to let bygones be bygones. That's what it's all about. That's why we have it once a month. I think we'll have it every Sunday. <laughs> Amen, amen. So we can forgive one another. So we can, amen, look at one another, amen, with love. Because that's what communion is all about. It brings us together in love, peace, and joy. The memory to Paul lingered on. There are some things that we forget. But there are some things that we ought to remember for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And oh, how 
sweet and how joyful it is to remember the good times of life. Mm -hmm. Oh, we remember our first love. We remember our first call. We remember uh, our first child. We, were, we, we, we remember when we first went to college. We remember all of those good times. Amen. When we were on cloud nine, everything was going our way. The ball was bouncing in our favor. Oh, do you remember? Amen. I remember when I was strutting my stuff. Mm. Amen. I had a full head of hair. You can't see it. Right. I had six pack abs. Amen. Good looking. Amen. Amen. That's what I was God's gift to win. Amen. Those were the good times. I had money in my pocket. Mm. Driving a new car. I'm leaning with the gangster leg. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm talking about it's easy to remember them good times. Is that right? But how painful it is sometimes when we have to remember the hard times. The times of trial. The times of tribulations. The times of disappointment. The times of betrayal. I think a secular sinner said it beautifully, Gladys Knight. Memories may be beautiful and yet what too painful to remember we simply choose to forget. Oh, in the laughter whenever we remember the way we were. The memories linger on. And here, Paul, he calls the church of Corinth to remember Jesus Christ, to remember that he died for the sins of the whole world, to remember that he died to make men holy, that he died to make men free, and his truth is marching on. He called them to remember how Jesus touched them, how Jesus made a difference in their lives. We are so much better because we know Jesus Christ. How many thank God for Jesus? Amen. How many thank God for Jesus? Amen. Amen. I can see a little bit better because of Jesus. Amen, amen. I can walk a little straighter just because of Jesus. I can love a little more because of Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he came down to a mean and cruel world to die for somebody like you and me. Thank God that he came to reconcile us back to God. He came that we may have life we may have him go up under the cave to seek and save that which was lost. And I was in that lost number. Amen. Amen. I know it's hard to believe. Amen. Because it looks so sanctimonious now. <laughs> Amen. It's hard to believe that Pastor Houston, amen, was one day lost in a world of sin. Yeah. Woo! I was out there. Is that right? The devil had me hog tied in cotton. I was a five star general for the devil. How about a witness right there? Amen. Amen. Did everything that made me feel good. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Drink like a fish, cuss like a sailor. I was out in the world. Yeah. How about a witness right there? Yeah. Woo! But he died for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. To make me free. Yeah. And to forgive me of my sins. And I thank God for Jesus today. Yeah. The memories linger on. Mm -hmm. And so because Jesus made a difference in our lives, there have been men and women who have gone on before us. Mm -hmm. The pioneers of this day and age, they've made a difference in my life yes, and in your life. Mm -hmm. yes, they gave their life that you and I may live. And that's why we celebrate this month of black history because somebody died that we may be able to have the right to sit anywhere we want to sit. 
to be able to go to school anywhere we want to go, to be able to live in a place we want to somebody gave up their lives. Yeah. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Mahatma Gandhi, for teaching us Sahadra, nonviolence. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Martin Luther King, who taught us how to stand tall in the face of adversity. Yeah. Taught us that we were somebody. Yeah. Taught us that we could be a drum major for righteousness or a drum major for peace. Thank you, Reverend Ralph Abernathy. Thank you, Andrew Young. Thank you to Sunday Overture. Thank you, Sojourner Truth. Thank you, Harriet Tubman. Thank you, Rosa Parr, for sitting in the bus and deciding that you didn't want to get up that day. Thank you for taking your seat. Now we can sit down anywhere. Oh, thank you for those who have touched our lives and made a difference in this great America. We can't forget them. Why? Because the memories linger on. Okay. Apostle Paul here, as I come to a close, Apostle Paul had heard a report about the church in Corinth. Heard that there was disorder in the worship service. Paul heard that 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 that, that, that was uh, various factions in the church. Mm -hmm. They were quarreling among themselves. That's right. Amen. And that was 2,000 years ago. Amen. He must be talking about the church of 2022. No. <laughs> Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. If you want to hear some quarreling, you call a meeting. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Amen. And they're quarreling among themselves. And they Paul was dissatisfied with. And not only that, uh, uh, the third thing that was going on is that, 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 that women, and see Paul don't get me in trouble right here, but this is what Paul said, I got Reverend Houston in second. Uh -huh. Amen. In the church, there were women who were coming to the worship service with heads uncovered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this was an abomination for Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul was what the ladies would say in modern day, they would say he's a chauvinist. Because Paul believed that 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 women should be seen, not heard. He believed that, that women were inferior to men. And he based it upon uh, the eighth psalm. Listen to that. Where uh, it says in that and uh, and God made man a little lower than the angels. Crowned him with wisdom and knowledge and placed him in dominion over everything. And so Paul's theological argument was that now if women come to the worship service with their head uncovered, it means that they're saying that they have more authority than men. Man can come with his head uncovered because God placed him in authority over everything. And so Paul said, if women come with heads uncovered, mm -hmm. it means that they are saying, I'm equal to you. Amen. Amen. Now, it wasn't true back in Paul days, but it, it is true today. <laughs> My wife tell me all the time, no, no, we equal. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You know, every now and then you got to put down my foot. She said, You put it down, I'll cut it off. <laughs> so, so Paul's theology wouldn't work today. That's what was going on. And the third thing that was going on is that there was a mix up about the communion. The communion was being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. There were people in the church who had different social and economic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. In other words, there were some poor folk in the church, and there were some rich folk in the church. 
And, and those who were prosperous and rich, they would come to the church first. And they would eat the food and eat all the drink. And what did they want? Like this here right here? Amen. They eat most of that. <laughs> and the poor folk, when they got the church, they would they might have a piece of bread left, they might have a drink left, but the those who were proper did not care whether they had bread or drink at all. They were selfish. And Paul said, wait a minute. This is not how the church is supposed to be. Paul said, in the church of God, there are no little eyes, and there are no big views, amen. In the church of God, everybody is somebody. In the church of God, amen, uh, 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 God is head over everything. In the church of God, have a better witness right here. In other words, in other words, there is no difference between Jew or Gentile. The same God of one is God of us all. Amen. Amen. So God loves everybody. Yes, sir. Red and yellow. Yes, sir. Black or white. Mm -hmm. We're all precious in the Lord's sight. Yes. Have a good witness. Yes, Paul said it now. In spite of what's going on in the church, mm -hmm. I stopped by to let you know that we serve a loving God. I stop by to let you know we serve a forgiving God. I stop by to let you know that God is God and beside him there is no other. Paul said the teachings that I've learned from the Lord I pass on now to you. In other words, Paul is saying there are some things that I remember about Jesus Christ. I just can't shake it. I can't get rid of it. It just hangs on the wall of my memories. Paul said, I remember this man called Jesus who came down from heaven. He went around doing good. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He made the lame man walk again. Then he said, I heard the truth of grapevine. I remember everything that he did. And not only that, I remember that on the road of the cars, how he healed ten lepers in the get to cars. The memories just linger on. And then I remember uh, one day on the Sea of Galilee when a storm arose. And the disciples were afraid that they were going to die. How Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves and they obeyed him. Paul said, and I stopped by to tell you that that same Jesus who calmed the sea on Galilee, yeah. he'll calm the storms in your life today. Yeah. All you got to do is just call on him. Say, Lord, I need you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Come, Heavenly Father, Holy Dove. Yeah. Have another witness right here. Yeah. And then Paul said, I remember uh, the times when Jesus was handed over uh, in the garden of the city. Yeah. I remember when Judas faced a traitor's kiss upon my Jesus cheek. Yeah, yeah. Then I remember when Peter denied him three times. Yeah, yeah. I just can't shake it because the memories linger on. Yeah. I remember how they took him to Parsons Pilate. Yeah. I remember how the angry mob said crucify him. Yeah. His blood be on our head. Yeah. I can't forget it because the memories linger on. And then, then, then finally, I remember church in the upper room. I remember how he entered the room and how he took bread and broke it and gave it to us and said, this is my body which is given for you. Take it eat, and every time you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. And then I remember when he took the cup and 
And that this is not blood of a new cup. And every time you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Have I got a witness right here? And so today, I remember the Lord. I remember Jesus. I remember what he said. I remember what he did on Calvary's cross. When they hung him, I heard him say, it's finished. I heard him say, into thy hands I commit my spirit. I heard him cry out, Lord, now shout out to me. My God, why hast thou forsaken me? The memories just linger on. What he did for us. How he died for us. How he has forgiven us. We can't forget it. Why? Because the memories, they linger, they linger on. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause right here. There may be somebody today who have those memories that just linger on. The memories of mother, the memories of grandmother, the memories of papa, and how they touched our lives. You can't forget it because the memories, they linger on. As we stand and sing this morning, if there be one today, if you want to come and walk down memory lane and remember the good things and the good tidings that God has given you, I believe right now is a mighty good time to come on and say, Lord, I want to remember you for the rest of my life. Let us all say it.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. And now for our opening prayer as we pray this morning, may it become one of our own. Let us now pray the opening prayer in unison. Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and and from from you no secrets secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for our prayer for illumination, let us pray in unison. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The bottom of page 7, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who others repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. And for our confession and pardon, let us pray in unison. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our enemy. And we have not heard the cry of Jesus. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Page nine, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When your love turns away, our love failed. Your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophet. And so with your people on earth and over the company of heaven, we praise your name and join that unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. The Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim relief to the captives, and recover the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour down for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ on the cross as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, <coughs> let us pray. <laughs>
Jesus Christ, which was given to thee, preserve thy soul and body into everlasting life. Take and eat and remember that Christ died for thee, and beat upon him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Likewise, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and drink, and as you drink, remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. 